Imperium. This is your review for two. Good day. My name is Joe. Today we'll be going over Imperium and how it plays with two players. Now this is on the back of the Imperium Horizons box that came out just a couple weeks ago. And this game is a competitive game for one to four players where you will be building up your civilization. Everybody at the beginning of the game is going to have their civilization. Their nation deck of cards are going to come out. And hopefully by the end, you can get through some of your development deck, get some fame cards, become the king of kings, potentially have the most victory points and win. So let's see a little bit more how to play. So Imperium at its core is a deck building game. At the beginning of the game, you're going to choose, everybody's going to choose their own civilization. That's going to have their own power card, which is kind of the capstone of their civilization. Have a nation deck and a development deck they will soon uh, be able to put in their deck. But you have your set of about 10 cards to start off with. And you're going to have three actions along with uh, about five exhaust actions. Six, I believe, if you're playing with the, the trade expansion in Horizons. So on your turn, you're going to have those three actions and you're going to do various things. Most of the cards will cost you an action to play. And you'll be able to acquire cards from the tableau. They may be lands. They may be um, different uh, tribes, different things out there to, to increase the power of your deck or to do certain things in your deck. However, usually when you acquire some of these cards, you're going to get some unrest. And unrest are kind of like wound cards in Mage Knight or, or something that clogs up your deck that you're really not going to like. And you can get rid of those in various ways. But you are building uh, your nation uh, through this deck building process, uh, playing cards, exhausting cards. Some cards may go into your personal tableau and keep as symbols for later. You may be able to combo off of those. You may be able to tuck some cards under different cards and, and garrison them, if you will. And you're really just trying to advance through your nation deck. Uh, once you get to the last card of the, the, uh, the nation deck, the Ascension, you're going to flip from a barbaric state of your civilization to an empire state. Then you'll be able to play cards of the different, um, uh, the different types and really start on your, your developmental area and getting some of these cards to earn, well, hopefully a lot of victory points. So as you're going to go through these, you're going to you're going to be playing cards on your turn. You're going to be exhausting uh, your different your different cards out here, and then you kind of have the cleanup where you can discard as many cards as you want, draw from your draw deck, and it's the next player's turn. If you run out of cards in your deck, you're going to shuffle in one of the nation cards. And that's how the progression happens. These are usually some good cards in here uh, that you that you get to play with, but um, it's kind of a, a gamble what you get, but you can uh, fill your deck with some of these other cards as well. So essentially, you pick your civilization. It's a deck building game and you want to have the most victory points at the end. So let's see a little bit more what I thought about the game. Now let's get into the rules a little bit, the rules and references. Uh, Imperium Horizons does a much better job of explaining the rules uh, than its its predecessors did. Um, I really like how this book is, is laid out. It is kind of thick, but most of it is kind of explaining some of the civilizations and the solo mode. Uh, it's a very a simple game at its core, but there are a lot of keyword elements that can get in the way a little bit. As far as references, uh, they do a pretty good job what you get. I like the Imperium Horizons. They give you a nice little uh, turn structure here, as well as the um, for each civilization. They now come with a solo bot that you can play with as well. Um, but the components in this game, the cars themselves, I've never really liked the cars. I do sleeve everything I can. Every time I get a new civilization to the table, I sleeve it uh, because the cards in this game are just not really the best. They did give more upgraded components this time as far as uh, the chips than the, the two previous versions. Let's talk about setup and table size. Well, I do spend a little bit more time at the table and it is a little bit more spread out than most people can have it. It could be played at a three by three, but I definitely like a little bit more. Um, getting it to the table really isn't 
too hard uh, just remembering the rules and really getting your civilization kind of learning some of the things about it on a surface level because some of the civilizations are a little bit more complex than the others but a fairly easy game to get to the table so now let's talk about the gameplay and this is where this game really shines if you want a a civ builder game uh like uh the sid meyer civilization video games this isn't quite it but it's it's somewhat close it has a lot of theme within each of the different civilizations you can really feel the difference in some of these especially when the nation cards come want uh, start to come up some of the Civilization may have a bigger nation deck than some of the others. Some may, you may want to stay in the barbarian state a little bit longer and attack the opponent a little bit more become, before you come civilized and become an empire. You can never really, uh, you know, each one of these civilizations is just a little bit different. And that's really what makes this game interesting. Um, the action selection, the cards that are out here, uh, now having three of these Imperiums, you know, you can mix and match uh, some of the different decks out here. And it's just really, um, there's becoming a lot of different ways to play. But there's a lot of also deep thought and strategy to this game. At the end of the turn, you're going to add, you know, uh, a, a chip to one of these, to one of these cards and make it more enticing. Um, you know, do you want to pick up that card? And it may cost a couple resources, a couple of the, you know, the trade goods or the materials, but it's going to come with an unrest. Or do you want to spend a little bit more so you can, you can uncover that card without getting the unrest? So there's just a lot of different ways to play this game this game is very is very deep um, each civilization like i said is is just feels unique from from the cards they play to maybe some are a little bit more attacking uh, to the other players some may just really focus on trade especially in the imperium uh, horizons box so there's there's a lot to unpack to this game but it's definitely you know, probably on the, the mid to mid to heavy, you know, side. I wouldn't call this a, a light game because it is going to take you a little bit of AP when you get this to the table of, let me try to maximize my turn. So, uh, the, the gameplay is very smooth. There's, there's a lot to think about, a lot of different ways to win, a lot of different avenues and a lot of choice. And you guys know that I love choice on this channel. So is this game good for two? And I'm just going to go out and say it, the, the AP for this game, the, the amount of time in between turns um, is just not quite where I'd like it in a two-player game. Uh, one person can really sit on their turn for, for four to five minutes deciding what's the best way that I can use my three actions and my five to six exhaust actions, you know, out here and utilize and get the best turn that I can um, going forward. And just there's really high planning in this game, and this really benefits, you know, kind of a lean deck. And you really don't want to bloat the deck too much, you know, unless you're trying to at the, maybe at the end of the game stack some victory points. But there's uh, for two players just a lot of downtime uh, with three to four. I wouldn't even, I'm sorry, I wouldn't even consider this game at three to four with just the amount of not enough player interaction between turns to get that. So two players, I still can't really suggest this game. However, <laughs> I really, really enjoy this game solo. So maybe this game doesn't play the best uh, with two, with three, or four, in my opinion. But solo, especially Horizons, they give you this really neat uh, reference sheet for the each civilization that you play as the, the Atoma, where 
they are going to have their own special way of playing with a with a different deck and it's pretty smooth and i really like that you know you need the i, I like to play with the trades from horizons so you play with the the trades list from horizons they have their own little solo mode table you got their own personal card and it's pretty quick it probably takes about a minute for you to go through their turn and kind of simulate uh what a player would do and you're really trying to compete and uh, what i do like about a good solo mode is there's different varying levels of play so once you kind of get bored of you know one level because you think it's too easy there's another level you can bump it up to where they get to do almost more actions for the turn but it this game is a really good crunchy game really neat to get to the table kind of feels like a, a civilization builder light if you will kind of loose loose feel but you know going from barbarian to empire to bloating your deck to getting this you can really take a lot of good you know times with this game you can take your time maximize your turn make sure you have the right materials people trade goods as you trade with everybody else and it's this is a really solid solid board game so i really like uh imperium uh if this was your first kind of foray to the end of the universe i would get horizons just because it has everything you'll need as far as the solo uh reference cards all the um, kind of solo stuff still in the back of the book and how each um, faction, each civilization does play. The rules are streamlined. The, the chips are a little bit better. Um, don't always like some of the civilizations. Some of them are kind of out there um, and some of them are kind of made up throughout these. <laughs> but for the most part, this is a very, very enjoyable game for me. And I will probably only play this solo and for two, I think this will be a pass. So a fantastic game solo, but for two, uh, not quite for me. So hope you guys enjoyed the review and until next time.